In this lecture, we are going to learn about the C standard library. Now, all those functions and features that is not available in the core C is provided to the programmer as the standard library. Now, there are many library functions available in different header files. We have already seen some of the header files like the standard input and output stdio.h header file. So, to include any header file in your program, you have to write has include and then you give the name of the header file inside the angular bracket like this. Now there are many standard header files available which is being displayed here. Now you are not going to use all of these header files unless you are working on very specific task. But some of the header files that you are going to use very frequently are math.h which has the definitions of different mathematical functions. Similarly, stdio.h standard input and output header file which consists of all those functions which will help us to take the input to the program like scanf function and those functions that will produce the output like printf function. So we are going to use stdio.h very frequently and we are going to use stdlib.h. Similarly, we are going to use string.h. These are some of the most widely used header files. But if in case we are going to use any of the other header files, we are going to discuss that in our lecture. So do not worry about it. Now let's talk in details about the mathematical header file mat.h which consists of different mathematical functions which is being displayed here. These are some of the mathematical functions. Each of these functions will take an input and do some processing and produce the output. So if you talk about the sin x function, x is the input and the output is sin of x. So it is actually going to produce the sin of x. Now in this case x will be a double value and the output will also be double value. So this is specified in the standard library itself. Similarly there are different trigonometric functions available and we have exponential function like if you want to produce e to the power x exponential function this is what you have to use exp x and we have logarithmic functions and we have some of the functions like pow for finding the power and sqrt for the square root. Now we are going to talk in details how this power and square root function really works. Now let's talk about the power function. The power function name of the function is pow pow in small letters. It takes two input like if you would like to evaluate x to the power n right this would be my first input and this would be my second input okay. So if you want to produce x to the power y so the input would be x would be one of the input which is my base. So this is provided as the first argument here and y which is the exponent or the power is provided as the second input or the second argument here y and the output that is generated is x to the power y which is nothing but the value that this function will return. These two values x and y are double. Similarly, the output is also double in nature. Now, if you want to evaluate x cube or x to the power 3, you write this as like this, pow, the base is x, the first argument, comma, and the exponent or the power is 3. So, this will give you the output that is x to the power 3. This is how it works. But in order to make this work, you have to include the header file math.h at the beginning of your code. Now let's talk about the square root function. Name of the function is sqrt. It will take one input that is x which is actually double in nature. The type is double. It will produce the square root of x which is again double in nature. So if you want to really find the square root of x, how do you write that expression? This is how you write in math and in C programming you write this as sqrt x. So it will actually produce the square root of x. Now in order to use this obviously you have to include the header file math.h. I hope you have understood about how power and square root function works. Now let's write a program to really understand this in details. Now I have already created this file called as mathlib.c with some of the comment. Here I am going to demonstrate the working of the power function. If you can recall if you want to calculate x to the power n we can use the power function where x is the base and n is the exponent. So let's start with this power function now. I will be needing this header file because I am going to use this printf and scanf function in my program. Now please remember in each unique line you are going to have a header file. So if I want to include one more header file because I have to include the math.h header file I have to go to the new line. So I will write has include math.h. So these are two header files. I am using this header file because I am going to use the square root function 
and the power function. So let's have the main function here. So, so first let's talk about the power function that is x to the power n. So for this I'll have to have two input x and n. So I'll ask the user enter your base and exponent. Okay. So this is the message I'm giving to the user to enter the base and exponent. But before I take the value I need to declare the values. So I'll have double x comma n. So now I need to scan both the values of x and n. Both of them are of type double. So I'll write scan f. So for double I'll write percentage lf percentage lf there are two values comma m percent x m percent n. So these two values are scanned now. Now we can call the power function just by writing p o w power and then first argument is the base that is x and second argument is the exponent or the power that is n. This is going to return me back the value or the answer that is x to the power n. So I'm going to store that in a new variable called as ans answer. So I have to declare that variable ans here. Okay. So I think that I'm done. So I need to display the answer now. So I'll write printf answer is percentage lf. So I'm done with this uh, power function. So I need to compile this first. So let me compile this code gcc mathlib.c and then there is no error. So compilation is successful. So I'll run this code. So it's asking me the base. So let me write 2 and 3. I'm trying to find 2 to the power 3 and the answer is 8 which is correct. Okay. Similarly, I can give double value 2.3 to the power 4.2 and the answer is 33.05. So this is working fine. I hope you have understood this. Now let's talk about the square root function. So let me comment all these lines, line number 12 to 16, because I would like to write the square root now. So for that, it's very easy in VS code. Just select all these lines, then just type control forward slash and all of them will be commented at once. Now let me write a program to find the square root. So to find the square root of a number, first of all, I'll need a variable which can store the number itself. So let's say the variable is named as a. So I'll write double a. And now I need to take the input for a. So I'll ask the user enter a. I'll scan the value scan f percentage lf m percent a. So a is scanned. So I'll display the answer now that is printf square root of a is percentage lf okay and comma now here i can directly write the expression to find the square root so expression is sqrt square root of a okay so i've written down in the printf itself the expression so instead of this lf the value evaluated by sqrt a would be displayed that means this percentage lf will be replaced by the square root of a so let's try to save this and let's compile this mathlib.c successful and I'll execute this. So I'd like to find the square root of 25. The answer is 5. I'd like to find the square root of 2 and answer is 1.414214. And this works fine. That's all in this lecture. I hope you have understood how to include a header file and how to use the functions that is being defined in those header files. We are going to very frequently use these functions, square root and the power functions in our future lectures. So until then, stay tuned.